Okay. Well, I'm going to talk about um, a little bit about the Torah portion that we just read on Saturday because we did some stuff. <gasps> As I was kind of looking for some Elul materials, I actually found something that related Elul to the Torah portion that we just read. So, and in fact, it was the part that I had wanted to study in during the study session on Saturday. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to mostly read uh, this article uh, by someone named Rafi Ellenson, who is a third year rabbinical student at the Hebrew College. And the title of the article is Elul Tishuva and Shame, the Egla Arufa. So the Egla Arufa is this law that gets set out um, in Deuteronomy in the section that we read this past weekend, which is the Parsha uh, Shoftim. So uh, Rafi Ellenson writes, now that Elul has begun, I am once again undertaking the process of Cheshban Hanefesh, accounting of the soul. Reflecting on the year that was, I meditate on moments I fell short and times when I could have been better to my loved ones, as well as to the greater community around me. Frankly, it is hard not to wince when thinking of particularly embarrassing or shameful incidents. And while these instances did not define my year, they nonetheless punctuated it with uncomfortably large commas. I, and many of us, suffer from shame, as defined by therapist and researcher Dr. Brene Brown, as an intensely painful feeling or experience of believing that we are flawed and therefore unworthy of love and belonging. It is part of human experience to feel this, however difficult that might be. As I read the close of Parashat Shoftim and the description of the law of Egla Arufa, using Brene Brown's definition of shame, I understand the authors of Torah as struggling with the same painful emotion. In describing what one does when one finds a murdered body out in the open, which is what this portion was about, and the murderer is unknown, the laws of the Egla Arufa provide a roadmap and inspiration for how to process shame into actionable change. So in Deuteronomy chapter 21, we read that um, in the land that God has given to B'nai Israel, they, someone comes across a murdered body in, in a field and they don't know who the murderer was. Uh, the leaders of the area are uh, instructed to take a young cow to a field, to a wadi, and to ritually kill the cow by breaking its neck, which is not the way sacrifices occur, right? Sacrifices are usually in the temple, on the altar, they're very prescribed. So they have this weird out in the field sacrifice that goes on. Then the elders of the town nearest to the corpse wash their hands over this heifer whose neck was broken. And they say this, they say, our hands did not shed this blood nor did our eyes see it done. In killing the cow, the elders reassert their lack of culpability in the initial murder, which no one was accusing them of in the first place. Why, after killing this cow, do these elders assert their lack of guiltiness? It reads as a deep denial and an outgrowth of shame. And then the author says, I put myself in the feet of these leaders. How could I have allowed this crime to happen in my community? How could I not know the person who might be responsible? Where could I have gone wrong? Indeed, a common and appropriate question for Elul. The Tanaim and the Amorim, the rabbinic sages of old, uh, conclude that the elders make their declaration to reassure that they have not neglected the needs of the community, nor have they given false judgment that the murderer is truly missing. But who are these elders reassuring? And what is this bloody ritual for? Then the text says, absolve, God, your people Israel, whom you redeemed, and do not let guilt for the blood of the innocent remain among your people Israel. They will be absolved of blood guilt. Thus, you will remove from your midst guilt for the blood of the innocent. This is a description of a transition from shame to guilt. So shame over having been inadequate in protecting the community to guilt over that act. Dr. Brene Brown differentiates between guilt and shame. Shame is a focus on self. Guilt is a focus on behavior. This complements a 19th century commentary by Samuel David Luzzato, who was known by the Hebrew acronym Shadal, a, a, a Jewish Italian uh, scholar, who notes that the Egla Arufa reinforces a belief in the notion that all Jews are responsible for each other. 
his teaching, his, his reading teaches us to understand that Egla Arufa is a lesson in the positive utility of guilt as a catalyst for communal responsibility. As we embark upon our personal journeys this Elul before the Yamim Noraim, I encourage us all to remember that there is no genuine teshuva until we turn from individualistic shame that prompts self-flagellation to guilt of a positive sort that prompts us to build, strengthen, and cultivate selves and communities without room for violence or ills. May this Elul be one of meaningful contemplation and productive guilt work and cheshban hanefesh for us all. <gasps> Play to the camera. Dream true. Tomorrow, 11.30. I can get this hat.